Hi there, I'm Kay Teske and I'm a, I'm a professor in the School of Public Health at UBC, University of British Columbia. So tell us about your study. So we did a big study of injuries in Toronto and Vancouver and it was to look at the effect of infrastructure on injuries. And in Toronto, we were shocked to find out that one third of the injuries were related to, directly related to crashing on a streetcar track. And so we decided to look at them in more detail. And what we found out was that there were certain kinds of street designs that were much worse. So if you were on a street with no bike infrastructure and car parking, the chance of being in a streetcar track crash was higher. If you took away the parked cars, it improved the, the situation, made it a little bit safer. If you had a bike lane, it made it a little bit safer. But if that streetcar was in a separated right-of-way by itself, there were no track crashes. So that is a great solution. Or putting uh, streetcars, or putting bicyclists on separated bike lanes, another great solution. In Seattle, you have that on Broadway. Terrific. One of the things that a lot of people say is you should only cross streetcar tracks at right angles. And that's true, but we found that 70% of our crashes were on the in between intersections. And it wasn't that people didn't know that. They just suddenly had something happen in front of them. A car stopped, a door opened, a pedestrian or a cyclist did something funny in front of them. And all of a sudden they swerve to get out of the way and they're in the streetcar track without even thinking about it. So those, those sudden maneuvers are very hard to predict and they're very hard to use your knowledge against. So it's important instead to design the infrastructure to protect the cyclists, either by separating the cyclists or separating the tracks. The other thing we found was on at intersections, it was better for people to make a two-stage left turn because making a left turn was a high-risk venture where there were streetcar tracks. So having a protected intersection that guides people to make that two-stage turn like pedestrians do is a great idea. The other thing that we looked at was bike tire size. We compared it to the size of the flangeway. So the issue is a lot of the crashes, the tire got stuck in the flangeway. 85% of the crashes were like that. So we thought maybe if bike tires were bigger, but the trouble is they have to be really fat, like fat, fat tires. Um, so it's not a great solution, and we haven't got tests to see if it would be a solution. Some bike share systems have quite wide tires on their bike share bikes, 50 millimeters, which is about the width of the widest flangeway. Um, but we don't know that that will stop it. It's touch and go. But it's better than many personal bike tires, which are even narrower. And you talked about the five different or six different possibilities over there. Okay. Yeah. So the top bit here shows at an intersection. And in Toronto, there can be some very complicated intersections. And this is where the left-hand turns were a big hazard. You can see how hard it would be to cross at a right angle when you've got a mess like that, spaghetti really. So making a two-stage left turn where you're always going perpendicular to the track is better. This is a typical street with no bike infrastructure, with parked cars, moving cars, the streetcar lane. You can see that one little slip, all of a sudden, you could be in that streetcar track. If you take away the parked cars in this picture here, all of a sudden you have a little bit more space to maneuver if something happens. There were still crashes here, but it was safer than this. The next one down, this shows a, a painted bike lane. So it's a little bit better, gives cyclists space, but it's not to say that a car can't still, they still have to cross to get to park. 
Sometimes there's double party parking, opening doors. So better, but still not great. The bottom one is an ideal one. We didn't see any streetcar trashes in this situation. Here, the streetcar has a dedicated right of way all to itself. No interaction with bicyclists at all. The, a similar situation, but instead of with um, the streetcar being separated, instead having the bicyclists separated on a cycle track or a separated bike lane, protected bike lane, that would be similarly good. So you should put in separated bike tracks? I would say both of those solutions have two benefits. A dedicated streetcar lane is great because you don't have cars interfering with the streetcar traffic. And it also prevents injuries to cyclists. So those are two benefits. If you do a streetcar or a cycle track, it also has two benefits. It prevents any streetcar track injuries. It also prevents injuries from interacting with motor vehicles. And then finally, it's so preferred by cyclists that it attracts people to bike. More people are willing to bike if you have those protected bike lanes. So the systems that I've seen in, in uh, Holland aren't always separated tracks, so how, how do they manage that traffic? Well, I don't know the situation in Holland in detail. They do still have what they call tram crashes. It's not a non-issue. I've had people tell me it's a non-issue in Europe. It's not a non-issue. It is an issue there. But they do have far more separated bike lanes, so it's not as much of an issue.